Charles from Southern Indiana. Well, if you're new to my channel uh, because of you seeing this video, I do want you to know that we have a very extensive van build series that I will uh, put in the comments below. And it's very extensive. I say it's in excruciating detail, but it shows how we did everything in here. And trust me, we're not uh, professionals at all. We just sort of figured it out as we went. And we're still doing some tweaking right now. We're getting ready to go to Colorado in a few weeks. Let me tell you about our power system. Thanks for watching. Well, by way of introduction, I'm a retired elementary music teacher. I'm 70 years old. My wife was a nurse. Then we raised a bunch of kids. And then she worked at the library. We used to have a little runaway mini camper. This is uh, one of their models. And um, I did videos for that company uh, just because we love the family that owns it. And uh, we enjoyed those campers, but I really didn't like towing anything. And we, I got on a Jag watching band conversion, so I thought that we could do it. And we ended up doing it. It turned out better than I could ever have dreamed of. But this is a 2018 Ford Transit 250, uh, medium roof, 148 wheelbase, not extended. And um, we put in windows, a max air fan, and all everything else that you see here, and it worked out great. Um, when I was thinking about how to power this thing, uh, one, of the, one of your choices, which is what most people do, is most people do not have beds like this. They'll have a bed up here and a garage underneath. And underneath, you would see one to four, maybe, uh, 100 amp hour lithium batteries, and they would be connected to a uh, charge controller and inverter and all of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they take up a little more space, I think, than what I have. Um, it, it depends on how many batteries you would put in. So I uh, decided to look at uh, what people call solar generators. And, and I had a different brand than EcoFlow in our um, little runaway mini camper. And it worked great. And I powered everything. So it got me thinking I could do the same thing here. And so um, uh, EcoFlow did become one of our corporate partners, just like Ice Cold Fridge Freezer, Custom Mattress Factory, Flatline Band Company, Roof Rack. So they did supply me with a number of units that I did reviews on and that we use all the time. So uh, typically, the trip that's coming up in a couple weeks, uh, I will take with us, as you'll see in here, uh, I call it my power box, two Delta 1300s, a Delta Max, and then we could bring along this little River Mini just because it's so handy, you can pick it up and move it anywhere. And so we run everything with the EcoFlow units because they've got the charge controller and the inverter, everything is, is inside it, they're all in one. And uh, if it's winter time and it's cold and we're home here in southern Indiana, I can just pull the batteries and keep them warm in the house. If we're going to head to Florida, I get them all charged up, put them back in, and off we go to a warmer climate. So that makes it really easy, uh, not having to worry about protecting them. I can just take them in and, in and out, not a problem. And so what are we running here? Well, we're running, as you can see, I've got puck lights. They really take hardly any power at all. So I've got six here. For there, they're on dimmers, so we have separate dimmers. We have a max air fan that is very efficient. It does not take a lot of power. Uh, we have USB ports, one there, one there, one on up both sides of those cabinets. And so we can plug in any 12-volt cigarette plug kind of thing or USB ports. And then we also want to be able to run 110 um, appliances. And so what we have is a microwave, a small microwave up there, uh, 700 watt, and then just a simple coffee pot. And so uh, we can run those. If we're on shore power, I run everything on shore power. I do not use the Eco, ba EcoFlow batteries at all. Uh, I use an inverter, and it feeds a 12 volt system that you'll be seeing shortly underneath here. Um, these three units, I've got all the cords for plugging in the 12 volt to feed a fuse block in there. I've got it long enough so that the battery here or the two here, it can reach. I don't have to pick them up and take them out. How about recharging? Well, for onshore power, I top them off and make sure that we have shore power. I would say uh, on the trip that's coming up, I think it's 17 days total, uh, I would say almost half the time will be no shore power and half the time with shore power. And so... Um, it's not a problem because with all the power that I've got in here with two Delta 1300s and a Delta Max 2100, I have basically the equivalent of four 100 amp hour batteries that you see people do in most van builds. And so, um, shore power, I keep it charged up. How, how else do I do it? Well, I've got solar. I don't really depend on that. I, to me, that's more of topping off a battery. 
but if, you know if we're driving in the sun or this is parked at Rocky Mountain uh, up at Bear Lake or where or the campground uh, where we're staying at Glacier Basin um, if anything needs to be charged I guarantee you the solar will be feeding into one of the batteries so I've got 200 watts up there a new power 9 BB solar panel and I'm about they're gonna send me another one when we get back from our trip so I'm gonna have 400 watts up there and uh, so that's one way I can be charging then I can also charge uh, via the the car the engine because I have a DC to DC from Victron charger and it's one of the Orions that's got the Bluetooth app and it's um, underneath the microwave and I'll show you that just real briefly it is wired to a power point on the driver's side there are two points there and they're fused, I think 60 amp and something else. Um, I did not wire that, but most everything else Susie and I did, cut the holes. Uh, this is actually, a, a, we have a, you may not see it, but it's a passive vent up here, and then a, a max air fan there. Um, so we also have a 12 volt water pump. Uh, we changed our system recently, so now we just have a standalone thing that drops in a bucket and you got your shower. But we still have a drain and a uh, shower pan and drain right there underneath this area in this bed platform. So the system works pretty easily. You just have to plan out as you build your van where the wires are going from the fuse block and then run those pairs everywhere where you are going to need power. And so I'm, I'm running, if it's shore power, I can run the 110 and everything uh, via shore power. So there's an outlet that you'll see coming in. Used to be 30 amp, I changed it to 110 because I just didn't like having adapters. Most of the time, all we're using is 110. We're not putting in a, a, an air conditioner, so we don't really need it. So what I did was I ran from here up and around. I've got two lines running to the front, and there's 110 outlets on both sides on those cabinets to plug in anything that needs that. If we're not on shore power, I still can use those lines. I instead have them plugged into the back of um, either the Delta 1300 or the the Delta Max, or actually, they're on this little guy too, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to run up the microwave or coffee pot with this little thing. So, uh, but it runs a lot of other stuff, like a small fan, it'd run it for a long time. So, there you go, that's kind of an introduction to what we have planned there and how we decided to um, power this. And let me show you what's inside here. So, here is our power inlet, and it's a Marinko. 30 amp outlet but I um, took the 30 amp plug inside out because we're not using air conditioning and it just was um, a pain sometimes having to use an adapter so here's how the power comes in and then I'll show you what it looks like inside so shore power comes in from here this cord it's a pre-wired NOCO got the plug out there and then two plugs here so it's like really um, a double extension cord and then these two plugs here are um, heavy-duty extension cords, basically, that go from one side or to the other side, and they feed power to the normal household outlets that are on the far side of both of those cabinets. So uh, we can plug in a coffee pot and microwave, and then there's an outlet on the one by the sliding door as well if we need to plug in for 110. Uh, if we have shore power, let me show you this. Here are the other two deltas. I use this Schumacher inverter. And so if we're on regular shore power, I would plug this into the outlet over there. And then here's how I would run my 12 volt. So this cord here that normally goes into the back of one of the deltas, I would plug that into this inverter here and that's how we would get the 12 volt power because as I mentioned before if we have shore power I don't run the lithiums at all I only would be charging them so that's what those two big orange plugs are there okay and then I went ahead and moved into the box here again is the 12 volt uh, plug and then this is the cord for uh, solar so I've got a, it's plenty long and so I can run it to either box and that's going up to the roof to a new power 200 watt solar panel soon to be two of them so it'll be 400 watts coming in and just standard XT not XT uh, MC4 connectors over here and then the new uh, DC to DC charger 
they I had um, Red's custom design put this in for me and they ran heavy-duty cables and so this is another XT60 connector and it runs to the front and then I'll show you the um, DC to DC charger right now so here we have our BL60D ice cold dual fridge freezer and we could run it off of 12 volt or even 110 if we wanted to so when we have shore power I, I have that choice and then here's our Orion Smart DC to DC charger and it runs from the power point on the other side of this seat it's just a little panel that pops off a lot of people don't know that it's there I didn't know and so it's got two places where you can run a lot of stuff from and so I've got the wires going that way and then these wires are going through the bed platform back there to that connector that you'll see and it terminates in an XT60 which is how you plug in solar or uh, power from um, a DC DC charger into any of the EcoFlows that I've got back there so it works really well and it's out of the way underneath the microwave here works out great well this is how the power box looks this is two sections of the four on this side of the camper van in a bed platform and on the left that's a Delta 1300 another Delta 1300 and the Delta Max and I've got the cord here for plugging in the 12 volt plug on either of these any of these three here I've got the uh, solar cable coming from up on the roof and it's routed over here and it it's hooked on there and then I've got this XT60 terminated cable coming from the front and it's the uh, DC to DC charger and I'll... I thought I would tilt the Delta 1300 just to show you this is where we plug in the 12 volt cord that goes to the Blue Seas fuse block and then um, it, there are six outlets that you can plug into and I use these if I'm sending um, AC power to either side of the van to the normal house outlets that are on the two kitchen cabinets at the other end of the camper. And so here we have a Blue Seas fuse block and I've still got some empty circuits. And so what I have is the plug that goes into the back of the delta or the inverter that feeds 12 volt. It's connected to uh, positive and negative terminals on this fuse block and then as I was building the van I ran pairs of wires along the walls or up in the ceiling to do the puck lights I have a separate line running to the max air fan all of these have small fuses on them and uh, I'll, I'll pull the cover off and show you that and I have extras so I'm always set for that and there's um, a pair of lines running up to the two groups of puck lights. I have a group of six and a group of four and they run to separate dimmers for the front and for the back and then I have lines running on both sides of the van from this fuse block to USB ports that are on um, the cabinets both on the front and the back and so that gives me plenty of places to plug things in then there is a separate line that runs to the Iceco VL60 dual fridge freezer that's up front as well. And that's really my only thing that I make sure is running all the time when we're on a trip. So, Well, there you have it. It's a pretty simple system. Drop in batteries, take them out when I want to. Easy to recharge. Multiple ways of recharging the batteries. And it gives me a lot of flexibility. If I'm on shore power, I avoid the batteries altogether. If we're not on shore power, I can keep the fridge running. That's the only thing that has to run a whole, the whole time. So I always make sure that I've got 12 volt power either from a battery or from shore power through an inverter keeping the Iceco fridge freezer running. So uh, it's worked great for us and uh, it's just an option for you to consider. EcoFlow does make that power center that's an all-in-one unit and it has to work with specific, I believe the Delta Max and they've got other batteries that it can work with. And that might be a great option for you. I really don't know much about it, so you can get on their website and see about that. But I know people are definitely looking at that as a power solution. So there you go. And I hope it gave you some ideas. Thanks for watching.